Okay, I've got the Cellrite. This is the zigzag model of the Ultra Feed. It's called the model LSZ1. And we're going to do a test on a variety of fabrics here. And I know it's going to sew well on heavy duty stuff for the most part, but we're going to kind of test how heavy duty it is. And then on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we're going to try to sew everything down from a very thin, stretchy knit. We've got some micro fleece here. Um, we've got a little bit beefier knit that's a stretch knit than what this one is. This is more like a lining and uh, this is just a little bit uh, stiffer. This is a t-shirt style material. It's a rib uh, cotton with a two-way stretch and this is the cotton that you can see at just about any of the fabric stores these days for workout uh, garments and things like that so anyway it's a stretchy thin knit also so on all these I'm going to install a size 10 ballpoint needle and we'll go through these quickly I'll use white thread so we can see on most of them very well and let's see this is some fairly thick comb deck fabric. I've got it pressed and folded over twice. So we're just going to run down through here with a seam, which is something like you may do with drapes. And what we're going to start with is these are my old Levi uh, 550 jeans. So these are the ones of the very thick fabric. I've taken the hem out of them. And we've got the very thick uh, flat felt seam. And we're going to test. A lot of time the walking feet have trouble when it comes to this uh, flat felt seam. They kind of grab it and it goes back and forth. So uh, we'll see if this machine does that also. And that's pretty much it. That should take us through a pretty good... Um, oh, I've got one other thing. I've got a old white t-shirt here that I made that I didn't like the fit of. So we'll do a little test hem on a sleeve or... Let's see. Looks like the hem's not done. So we'll do a little test stitch on that also. All right, let me get everything set up. I'm gonna start the needle that comes with the machine was a size 20. So I've put my denim thread in it and uh, we're gonna start with the jeans and then we'll do the home deck. And uh, I'm gonna go to grab some leather also. We'll do four layers of leather uh, on it too. So let me get set up and we'll get started. Okay, to get started, we're going to do our jeans hem test real quickly, and I'm only going to do half of it. I'll start on the inside flat filled seam and work my way around to this seam. That's what's important. We know it's going to sew easily on the flat part. All machines do. So um, I've got to do this inside out. So let me see if I can get this up here where you can actually see what's going on. I may end up blocking the camera periodically here so hang on there with me I'm gonna start just before the the uh, side seam here and go ahead and move the needle over to the left a little bit so I can get a little bit closer to the edge okay about right there okay um, this is very dense where the flat felt seam is and just about all the walking foot machines uh, that I have even the industrials I've got to adjust the the uh, stationary foot where the needle goes through to come up much higher to get over that and uh, the problem that creates when you do that it's so high that you lose a little bit of control of the flatter part so I'm going to start sewing here and we're going to see if it grabs a hold of this and tries to push it back and forth. And if it does, I'll actually help it kind of push it through and get it started. That's about the best way I've found out uh, after hemming a bunch of jeans to handle this stuff. Okay, I've got a stitch length of uh, about three, five roughly. The best I can tell on here. Tighten that up. And hold my thread tails here and get started okay here we go it's gonna start climbing over the hump let's see what happens and this is where it'll struggle it's 
right on the edge of that hump on that other half over there and watch what it does. Ah, it actually did a pretty good job. Uh, that's kind of compressed. I've just about worn these jeans out. So if you've got new denim of that type, you may have to help it out a little bit there. But it did a good job going over it. So let's just continue on. see so here we go let's see what our tension looks like so a little bit further so I can see it here we go yeah, tension looks good back there go ahead and cut these threads off so stay out of our way Okay, we'll continue on to the other seam here fairly quickly, so here we go. This is not as thick, it's the surge seam, but let's have a look and see how it goes over it. Okay, it did well. So let's go ahead and uh, pull it out now. Keep reaching to the back of the machine. I'm so used to the foot lever being back there. This one's on top, so that takes some getting used to. Okay, let's have a look at our seam, see what we did. There are our stitches. They look nice and even. That's on the bottom side. Let's see, I'm sorry, that's top side because I was sewing inside out. That's on the bottom side. Uh, it probably go just a, a smidgen longer, but the tension's perfect. It looks looks nice. So, and stitch length got a little bit shorter over the hump, which is kind of normal. Uh, but it would be less noticeable by lengthening the stitch a little bit more. And this is the smaller hump over here. So, okay, it passed that test. Let's get the home deck fabric real quick and give it a try. I'm going to use the same thread. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the tension about a third of a turn. This, this shouldn't need quite as much tension, so here we go. Back stitch. It's common for these walking feet to grab up on these surged edges, so always go ahead and raise your foot and get that out of the way because it'll kind of grab it and pull it back and forth. So once you get past that, you're good. This fabric has kind of some raised dimples on it, so it's going to be interesting to see how it handles that. I don't think it'll have any problem, but here we go. Let's see if I can keep the seam from overlapping down here. I kind of let it go and it get a little bit of fed the bottom a little bit quicker. Let's see if I can ease it in. Maybe too much. Yeah, I think I did it. Yeah, it's pushing it over the edge a little bit there at the end, so I should take care not to do that. Back tack a couple. Let's see what we've got. thread there. Let me pull it up. There it comes. I'm 
Okay. Let's have a look at our stitch. See how we did. There's our stitch on top. And our stitch length is set at about three and a half right now. And there's our stitch on bottom. So this is fairly thick when you get all these layers together. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers of this folded over. So that's about what you would do on a hem on drapes. Okay, let me change needles and let's see, is there anything? Else? Oh, I need to do the leather. So let me get the leather and uh, we'll sew that up. So I'll be right back. Okay, before we do the leather, uh, let's go ahead and do the buckram header on drapes. So this is a small prototype that I did for the draperies that I did for our bedroom recently. And this was sewed up on the Brother PQ 1500S machine. So uh, let's take, let's go ahead and take this end one here. And we're gonna sew through, let's see with our pleats and everything, that'll be two layers of fabric there and then I'm going to come up here at the top, fold this pleat all the way in, and I'm going to do a very small zigzag right there to tack it into place. So let's do the straight stitch first and see how it handles this, this heavy buckram, and uh, then we'll do the tack down. So that's the two things I would do on pinch pleat drapes. These are double pleats, not triple. So keep that in mind. So you still a fairly short stitch length on this because you really need to kind of lock that down good. So that's what I would do. I'm trying to duplicate what I would do when I'm sewing these. So here we go. Yeah. Press your foot's on top, Kevin. Here we go. to the edge of the button. It's hard to get out of there. Get rid of all the threads so we can look at it. Okay. We have two stitches here. We have the original one on top, and then we have the one that we just did on the bottom. So it's nicely embedded. And I did that so I could do this, pull on it, and see if it comes apart. And I'm pulling really hard and it's locked into place good. So that's a nice short stitch that I would do on the header. And here's the back side. Let's see, make sure I get it right. It's the top one on the back side there. So there it is on the back side. Looks good. So, okay, let's do our tack now on the header. So we're going to do a zigzag of a little bit over two and we're going to try to get our stitch length down to zero we don't want those feed dogs moving so let me see if i can get it to the point where they're not moving okay let me try that okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to tack the top of the pleat down to the top up here. Get it a little bit more even than what it was. So what I do, get my needle out of the way here, is I'm trying to straddle where it crosses there. So 
but we want it at the very top and can't tell if I'm perfect or not but let's go ahead and give this a try so we're doing zigzag a little bit over two and trying to keep our stitch length uh, short so let's see what we get here See if I got any bobbin thread. Pulled the bobbin thread and broke it. Nope, we got it. Picked it up. Good. I'd actually cut these closer if I was doing this for real. But there's our little tack tied down. And on the back side, it's it's embedded in there nicely so anyway that's how your drape will look when it's all said and done so everything is pinched back like you see here and when you hang them up they'll all be uniform so okay that's it on the drape uh, now i'll move on to the leather and uh, we'll change out to some uh, nylon thread for that and then a uh, we'll go back to a size 20 uh, needle for it so all right Okay, I've rethreaded the machine. I'm using a bonded nylon 69 weight and I've increased the tension and increased the tension in the bobbin because I know leather takes a lot more tension. So I did about three turns on the upper uh, thread and tension and then probably two turns on the bobbin case and to get, get it where you have to actually pull it to get it out. Uh, so. Anyway, we'll see how well that works out. So this will be a test. I've got four layers of leather, and that shows you the thickness of it. It's something I'd make a handbag out of. So kind of that weight, that's about all you're gonna be able to do on these kind of machines anyway. Otherwise, you need a post bed machine. So let's get it under the foot. I'm gonna turn the hand wheel to bury the needle. It'll kind of give me an idea of how much force it takes to penetrate it. Yeah, that's taking quite a bit of pressure on my part to pull that around, so let's see how it sews it. Okay, here we go. Tension may be a little bit too tight. It's kind of, it's kind of pushing it. I didn't cut my leather pieces evenly there, so let's have a look at our stitch. Okay, there's the front side. You can see how much it pressed it. A lot of pressure on the presser foot, so I'm going to loosen that up some. It doesn't need to be that tight. Okay, there's a thread on the back side, so it does a good stitch. Let me go ahead and increase my stitch length to the full length, and let's do one more. Kind of helps to rock the hand well when you get the tension that tight. Kind of leave that there. Okay, there it is at the maximum stitch length. That's a much nicer looking stitch on something this thick. And there's the back side. So, four layers of leather, it passes. Uh, get a little bit less uh, pressure on the foot, and uh, I think you get a little bit better seam without it smashing the uh, leather so much. So take that into consideration. All right, I'm gonna get my needle changed out to a ballpoint needle and we'll do all the knits next and have a look at them. So let me get that set up and we'll get started on it.
Okay, I've got this uh, black t-shirt knit here and we're going to do just a real quick bottom hem seam. So we can get it around there, get it lined up. Okay. We'll just sew a few inches here and see how it looks. Uh, stitch length is about 2.5 or so it looks like, somewhere in that range. So let's give it a go here. See what we've got. All right. Get rid of all these threads on the front there. All right. Look at our stitch now white on white may be a little bit hard to see it's laying nice and flat so the tension's good there's the top side that I just sewed on and this is the bottom side which would be perfectly acceptable so that's our size 10 ballpoint needle and uh, white uh, let me see what weight thread I'm using here I'm using a Tex 50 weight thread, so that'll give you an idea how that does. Okay, let's move on to the other knits now. Okay, I've got the size 10 ballpoint needle installed, and I've got the lightest white thread that I've got. It's a, a Tex 50, uh, so it's not ultra thin, but I wanted you to be able to see the stitches. So here we go. I've got the micro fleece first. So I've got a surged edge here. I'll just go down the edge next to it. And probably need to back my tension off. I had to back the tension off on the bobbin also. So let me do a few stitches here and see how it looks. Shorten my stitch some, it's still at the longest length. See how we look on the back side of that. That actually looks good. So here we go. Try to remember to keep my hand out of the way for you. you do your back stitching on the machine you can actually take it down to the neutral position and kind of emulate the new electronic machines where they do the, the tacking stitch so that's kind of kind of neat come on out of there and I just broke my bobbin thread okay let's see how this looks Okay, down here is where I started with my longer stitch. Hopefully you can see that. There's the back side. So, I'll go ahead and tighten my tension just a little bit. It's buried nicely down into the fabric. So that looks good. Let's look at our seam here. Try to pull it apart. And it seems to be well put together. It's a nice seam. So it lays flat on the back side here, and I think that would work. So, okay, that's that part. Uh, next up, we're going to do this ribbed cotton. Let's see how it does on it. 
and then we'll move on to the gray cotton that's a little bit thinner than this yeah, I'm not gonna bother getting all that even there so let's just give it a sew here oh, let me pull my bobbin thread up yeah, something it's caught on something not up just a hair there we go okay snap a bobbin in go down and get her thread and pull it up Okay, there we go. Let me untangle that. There we go. Alright, now we're ready. Flip down. Let's see if I can kind of line this up a little bit better. At least get it close. Okay. Hold the thread tails. Here we go. looking it's a little bit tight I'm loosen it up a little bit I've got that pressure on the foot it seems to be all the way up so it still seems to be awful heavy let's see if it's stretching it out or what it does loosen the tension even more it seems to be tight kind of hold this taut see if it does a better job okay let's have a look see how it looks You can see where the tension's too tight there, and as I was loosening it, it started laying down flat. So I'd loosen it just a little bit more there. But the stitches look nice. Looks like my bobbin thread is still, the tension's a tad bit tight on it. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen that up, and uh, I'll get to the other one. So let me uh, loosen it up and uh, get our other fabrics, and I'll be right back, and we'll continue on with some of the other knits. Okay, I've got my lighter jersey here. Let me show you this stuff. You can kind of see how translucent it is when you stretch it. So it's it's light stuff. Anyway, this is stuff you find in your fabric stores these days. It's kind of hard to find good thick t-shirt material anymore. So this is what we have to live with. So all right. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the tension a little bit more again since it was already a little bit tight on the other and see if I can get this one right. So here we go. One of the things I can tell, these zigzag machines have a wide throat plate, uh, especially this one. Well, it does up, up to a five width, so it's not the widest, but um, it makes it a little bit tougher sewing these knits on here because of that, and I'm seeing it kind of push down into the throat plate a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and try to keep it a little bit tight here to help it out loosen the tension even more so a little bit more so I can look at it so here we go Still feels a little bit tight. There's a huge tension range with this machine, I've noticed. You can just keep going and going and going with it. So, very, very nice. A little bit more, and I think we'll have it. OK, 
Okay, let's have a look and see how we did. Tension may still be a little bit tight, so I may have to make another run at it here to get a good result. Tell you what, let me press it real quick. It'll take me just a second. Okay, there it is pressed. This is the back side right there, and this is the front side. Uh, tension's still a little bit tight. I mean, you could get by with that. It's probably a good seam. Yeah, it's not pulling apart as I pull on it, so that would work. But anyway, it sews it. Uh, just play with your tension a little bit, and you should be good. I'm going to go ahead and loosen my tension even more for what I'm about to sew. So we've got this little bit heavier knit here. And it's stretchy. It could be used for like ribbon, ribbing on a t-shirt or something. I keep trying to find that presser foot lever on the back. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and shorten my stitch just a little bit more. I think that's the secret on this. Loosen the tension, shorten the stitch. And it seems to be laying nice and flat now. And this just shows with any machine, you gotta kinda get to know it when it's new. It's the first time I've sewed on this since it's brand new. So let's have a look at our seam. There's your top thread. Stitch looks nice. There's the back thread. Looks very nice. So this machine will sew this kind of knit very well. And let's. This is the real stretchy lining knit. Very thin. So you can see how thin it is. This one, I know it's going to have trouble with. Any of them with a zigzag, um, for example, I've tried sewing this on the 9960, the Singer 9960, and it struggled uh, with it. So uh, I can sew it on my um, brother 1500, uh, PQ1500S straight stitch machine without any problem at all. And that's the difference between having a straight stitch with the, the needle uh, plate being for the you know, the size of the needle instead of these wide zigzag throat plates. So anyway, I'm going to try it, but I'll tell you what, let's just try to do a stitch with our hand and see if it catches. No, no, it didn't catch. So that pretty much tells me it's going to skip a stitch. So what I'm going to do I'm going to try a piece of this plain old um, paper towel. I'll put that on the bottom to see if I can prevent it from sucking the fabric down into the, the plate. And let's see if it does that successfully. So we're kind of mimicking some stabilizer here. This stuff will tear off and wash off. So well, what the heck, let's give it a try. Seems to be working, so here we go. I'm go ahead and stretch this just a tad. the stitch. So what I can tear off here. This is two layers of paper towel. Yeah, it's not all tearing off, but let me show you the stitch real quick. There's our stitch on the front. 
there's on the back where it tore off. I can spend some more time tearing it off. And since I stretched it a little bit when I sewed it, it'll actually stretch a bit. Okay, I think that is everything. So, yep, that's all of it. Uh, the throat plate doesn't have any guide markings on it, so this is, I bought this about a year ago. The, the new ones are white. This is their magnetic guide. If you get this machine, I'd invest in that because you need something to kind of measure from your needle over to get your seam allowance. So, anyway, that's it. If you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, take care.